All right, all right. Welcome back to part two of explaining transverse shear in beams. And, uh, um, and so now if you believe this transverse shear formula, and hopefully you do, that it's good for all of our basic assumptions in mechanics and materials, uh, let's take a closer look at what it means if you have a shear stress in a rectangular beam. And let's say we're given a, um, a shear that's applied here. So there's an internal shear here, V, I'll call, say, that's applied in the section. So if I take a cut uh, of a beam that's loaded and I find that it has some internal shear V that's acting downwards here, um, what I want to tell you is that here, the stress, the shear stress is the way that it works, and I'm going to prove this to you, is that Really, it's, you know, there's these small, if I look at little increments here, right here, uh, of the shear stress, they are acting in the same direction on the surface as the direction of the shear, and they're distributed parabolically, so that here, at the location of the neutral axis, so let's say here is the, the neutral axis line, NA, and here I'll just draw NA right here, they, the shear stress is max uh, on the surface of the beam of the cut at the neutral axis. And this right here is bam, 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 bam. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and so on and so forth, okay? Like that. And in fact, the, the profile here looks like here. Let's see, I'll draw it in red again. The profile here looks parabolic with max over here. So I don't know if you can see this or if this drawing has gotten too sloppy here. But that's what the intensity, this is what the intensity looks like here. These are my max shear stress. And this is this is a parabolic stress. So the shear stress profile, shear stress profile is parabolic. And if I drew this in 2D, this is how I would draw it. I would just draw it like this, you know. Here, I have this. Here's my surface right here. I have all my sh little shear stresses with the arrow being max at the neutral axis like this. And here is my neutral axis and A, A right here. And the intensity of this is parabolic, okay? And here is tau max at neutral axis location. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show this to you. So here, if I'm if I'm given a rectangular cross section, so let's let's draw a rectangular cross section here, like this. Okay. And I know that my neutral axis is here at the center. Uh, this has a height, which I will say each of these is h over two, h over two. It has a width, which I will call b here. It has a width b. There's my cross section. I have I'm given a given an internal shear v and uh, um and and cross section dimensions dimensions here dimensions here and i, I want to i want to be able to calculate the transverse shear find the transverse shear stress at any location uh, above the neutral axis okay at any y above the neutral axis and hopefully this will show that that the distribution of this is parabolic all right and so here let's see my y location at any y location so i would have here let me draw this as y bam like this um let me call that y1 okay so that our notation so this is my plus y direction is upwards and i'll say the location i want is at any location y1 which will be here this will represent y1 Okay, so if I want to find the transverse shear here, I just need to straight up apply my transverse shear formula. And that transverse shear formula is tau is VQ over IT, okay, or IB, which is the width. Okay, I'm going to say T here, and T represents the width at the location you are or you want the shear stress, the tau value here. Right, and so here in this case, um, let's see. For this, this is pretty simple. V is given, so check. Let me use a different color. V is given, check. Uh, T is T is just equal to B. Okay, so that's easy. And then I, you can cancel. Is is the I is the moment of inertia. I is the moment of inertia of the entire cross section of 
entire cross section. Okay, so you don't want to have to just take the area above the cut. So here, so let's see, let's calculate these properties. So first and foremost, t is equal to b, and here i, i, so there's t i is just one twelfth base times height cubed. All right, so that's easy for a rectangular shape. Now, the last part of this, so now we have i done, okay, is q, the first moment of area. Q is first moment of area about the neutral axis, okay? And the way you calculate Q, and you might see it in some textbooks, as Q is the sum of A prime times Y bar prime. You'll see it as that. And what it means, or really what it should be for us here is A1 times Y bar one, okay? And what this means is that A1 is you want you, the way you want to treat this is a1 is the area all the area all area above where you want where you want to know what the shear stress the transverse shear want tau where you want the tau and y bar one is the centroid it's the geometric centroid centroid of A1 measured from the neutral axis, okay, from the neutral axis. And this area could actually be all the area above or, I want to put in orange here, be all colorful, or all the area below, okay, or below where you want to know the tau, okay? Where you want the tau. Okay, so in this case here, this is, this dimension here is h over 2 minus y1. Yes, okay, right there. And this is still b. And this area right here, all the area above where I want the shear stress, it, okay, is, this is my a1. And so in this case, in this particular case, Q is equal to B, the width, the area of this blue zone, times H2 minus Y1, there's my area, times the centroid, and I'll do the centroid in purple, the centroid, the centroid of A1. Okay, here's my centroid, and this distance from the centroid to the centroid of A1 from the neutral axis. So this would be Y1 bar right there, okay, Y1 bar. And in this case, you know, it's pretty simple. It is just, you know, it's, it's Y1. This arm is Y bar 1. Let's put it over here. Y bar 1 is Y1 plus half this distance right here, half this distance right here, right? It's this distance right here, which is, one half h over two minus y one. Hey, and so here I would include uh, y one plus one half times h over two minus y one. And let me put this in a rectangular bracket or square bracket right there. Bam! And don't let that f that mess you up. Okay, so this is y one bar is equal to that, is defined as that right there. And so here, this is my Q. Now I just put it all into the transverse shear formula. So combine into tau, okay? And so I would get tau is equal to VQ over IT, which is V, is some value V that I don't know, uh, times 1 12th base times height cubed over here, times the width of, at the location I'm interested in, which is B also, okay? times this whole mess right here, which is B times H over 2 minus Y1, Y1 plus 1 half H over 2 minus Y1, bam. So if I, if I do some algebra, or just some algebra and get, make this into a little bit cleaner, what this will eventually become is 12V 
over bh cubed times h squared over 8 minus y1 squared over 2. And then if I factor out a half over there, then I get that this tau is equal to 6v over bh cubed times h squared over 4 minus y1 squared. And here, this term right here should scream to you parabolic, parabolic. And here, right here, so as y1 varies going up and down, right, it, it should, it should, uh, it, it, it should, you know, be parabolic, right? It, it's going to change because of the y1 squared right here. And you can see that at the very end, at the end of the beam, when, when, let's put this in green, when y1 equals h over 2. So this is either the top or the bottom. You know, this term becomes 0. So tau equals 0. And then when y1 equals 0, we, we're going to get tau max. Okay? Tau max. Tau max occurs. Okay? And you can also prove this by taking the derivative, you know, d tau over dy1 and then setting it equal to 0 and solving for y1. You'll end up with y1 equals 0. Okay? So here, these are, are the things. And, and this is just proof that this parabolic distribution that we had over here is good. Okay? And the max always occurs at the neutral axis. And, and that's one thing you can always kind of... Uh, at least when, as long as you have linear elastic behavior and everything, the max occurs at the neutral axis and the edges have zero shear stress. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. And we'll stop our, our shear stress explanation here or our introduction to it and hopefully do some more example problems later on. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.